So in this video, I'm gonna share my, I guess, experiences on what I believe are the huge benefits of using our sense of smell and taste to know when our starter is ready to use. Now this isn't gonna be a how-to video, but more of an insight into how I dialed my senses in to track the fermentation of my starter. And I hope it creates just a little spark of an idea and perhaps you could integrate something like that or something similar into your baking routine. Now I'm gonna use the word starter throughout this video to keep it simple, but within that, I'm referring to all of the different types of wild yeasts that we use in sourdough baking. Now how many times have you heard the words young, ripe and mature to describe a starter? Now in my mind, they're all words that best describe the flavour, but not the increase in volume. And yet in most cases, we concern ourselves with how much a starter has increased in volume, or if it's active and bubbly, or if it floats, to determine when it's ready to use. Now of course these things need to happen and we need to be able to recognise them. But that doesn't tell us anything about the flavour. So if we don't smell our starter, or better still taste it, we are missing out on a wealth of information. And I believe using our sense of smell and taste with the visual indications will help us fine tune the process, helping us to understand where the starter is in the fermentation process, the best point to use it, and what impact that has on the final loaf's flavor. So I've noticed that my starter would kind of rise and hit its optimum volume and then hang around there for quite some time. Now while it didn't appear to be any different visually, the changes in flavour were huge. Now I don't believe there's a right or a wrong point to use the starter, young, ripe or mature. It's a matter of personal preference. A starter at each of these stages is going to produce a great loaf of sourdough, but it's also going to produce different flavours in the bread. Now the focus always seems to be on how sour is the starter and how sour is the loaf of sourdough when there is so much more to flavour than that. So over the course of seven days, I fed and I created a fresh starter each day using five grams of starter, 50 grams of white bread flour and 50 grams of water. Now over that seven days, I continuously smelled the starter throughout that fermentation process to see what aromas I could identify with. And I just made notes of everything. But I also found that tasting a touch of that starter while I was smelling it increased my awareness of the flavors. Now, it was all a bit weird at first. All of the flavors were kind of getting jumbled up, I guess. I got apples, bananas, wine, bad wine, and apple cider vinegar. And it was frustrating, but it didn't take long until I was able to really pinpoint the different smells which correlated to where the starter was on its fermentation journey. Now during the second week, I used the raw ingredients that I could detect in the starter to try and kind of dial my sense of smell and taste in even more. I'd smell the starter while trying the different ingredients. Now I did this again at different stages through the fermentation process. And interestingly, it wasn't until I smelled and tasted the yogurt that I could detect a fattiness and a kind of roundness to the starter that I had never ever noticed before. So this is what I kind of discovered about my starter. In the very beginning, it smells unsurprisingly like wet flour. Now that may seem obvious, but it was really good to identify with that smell and taste. When my starter is young, it smells more of unripe bananas, which slowly changes into sweeter, riper bananas and yogurt as it gets a little bit older. And then as it becomes ripe, I can smell green apples, lemon, cider, and dry but fruity wine. And then as it kind of matures further, it becomes more acidic with kind of prominent apple vinegar aromas, which become harsher as time goes on. And of course, I also experienced slight burning in my nose and my eyes when the fermentation had gone that little bit too far. Now, armed with this information, I baked several different loaves using the starter at different points to work out what gave the best flavor outcome for me. And now it's kind of programmed into my mind. As soon as I've got the right mix of green apples, lemon, yogurt, cider, and white wine, I know my starter is ready to use, and it's become pretty much automatic. 
And then when I bury my nose into the crumb of the final loaf, I can still identify with those aromas. Think about this. If I asked you to make me a tomato soup, you could of course say no, but let's say for one second you're feeling generous. Now I give you three separate piles of tomatoes to choose from. What would you do? Would you just pick some randomly or would you think, why is there three piles? Would you explore a bit more? Would you cut them open? Would you smell them and taste them in order to choose the best possible tomatoes to make that soup? Now, if we would give this much attention to other ingredients we cook with, then I think our sourdough starter deserves the exact same treatment. Now, the benefits of using our sense of smell and taste, they don't stop with the starter. They can actually help us identify what's happening throughout the bulk fermentation period too. Now that is a little bit more complex and I'm still kind of experimenting with that. And this may seem a weird way to monitor our starter, but pH meters are commonly used. Our sense of smell and taste is also capable of detecting acidity. Now, maybe not as accurately, but you can get pretty close. And you know what? A pH meter can't tell you anything about flavor profiles, can it? Now, I know time is always in high demand, but if you do get the time to try this, I'd be really interested to know what you think. You know, the more consciously we use our senses and take notice of them, the more baking becomes instinctive. Now, if you haven't tried my old faithful sourdough recipe, then give this video a click and give it a whirl. A huge thank you for watching. See you again very soon. Stay tuned.